Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. All right, so this sock thing. So what we're doing is, Rex is doing blind tastings. Right. And I know what we're doing because I had to figure it all out. Well, you guys know what we're drinking while we're doing it's on the video. While we're doing first impressions, mm -hmm. here's the pro. Mm. This is a really crap sock, dude. Can y'all see that? Apparently, this is ironclad something. It's a bourbon named ironclad. I look, I got a little bit. Wait a minute. On the floor over oh, that's, a, that's a scorpion, dude. Yeah. We'll kill it. No, why? You no, dig fine. Whistle. Come they on. eat spiders. F you. So this is from Virginia. I Welcome to Virginia, Newport News, Virginia, the Ironclad Distillery. Yes. This is the ah, man. This is a serious wax coating. Need some help on this thing. Was that? Did you throw the sock in the trash? Yeah, that was that one that you could see through. You were all bitch, you were all bitchy about. But it has an eagle on it. Good night. Over wax. I think this is the same eagle that I use in the. It is. It's yeah. the same damn eagle. Well, I'm trying to. It's like. It's like you're really there. <laughs> it's like you're really there. <laughs> All right, so this is kind of cool. They're such a small distillery. They provide you with these. This is batch 18, bottle 66, date bottled 41418. Bear sock. Forecast was sunny. And the barrel tag is SMKJ. Now it turns out if you go to their website, you can find out where your barrel is now. Is it furniture? Is it being used to age something else? They track all of that is for it, you. Is it furniture? Yeah, did they use it to make it into like uh, stuff for the customers or make it into a chair? Is did this, they sell it to somebody is else? Is this a high rye bourbon? This is corn, wheat, and rye. Okay. And malted barley, so four grain. In theory, double distilled in six 26 gallon stills. This. So, you know the still we have down there? Yeah. Same size as that. They have six of them. Fair enough. Ooh. Ooh. There's a slight coffee kind of. So, I'm on the taste. It's that is moving too quickly. Really nice. Wow. It mixes it up. Okay. I'll give play by play here. Hold on. So, on the nose. Sweetened oak, but it doesn't come across as a really young sharp barrel. This is a new this is a new white oak barrel with a trace of vanilla on the back end. A little bit of walnut. This is a complex bourbon for me. I'm I'm getting more of a corn dust kind of musty corn heavy, but with a weird hint of mint in the nose. So that's why I was asking about is this a rye heavy bourbon? Because that what you're saying is mintiness. I think on the nose, it was almost coming across as like a little bit of anise. No. Yeah, it's not strong enough for me for anise. I'm pretty hypersensitive to that because I hate it. Yeah, I get uh, what you're saying with the mustiness though. Yeah. But it's not overbearing, it's not overwhelming. It's, no. It's just among a bunch of other things. It smells like the actual grains that are being used. Yeah. Like you can get the... But there's this wow. vanilla behind it and then there's... I think it's it's mint because I think it's the alcohol uh, which, what proof is it? It's 90 proof. Okay, so it's not that bad. I think it's lift, it's got this lifting feeling to the nose where it just feels like it's, it's uh, I'm oh, getting, now I'm getting back behind there to like a coffee bean. I'm getting a little, uh, citrus on the back. Almost a little lemon. I haven't tasted it yet. So. No, on the nose. I went back mm -hmm. to the nose after the taste. That is actually one of the better bourbons I've had. And I've had a few. Brown sugar and molasses, which are almost obligatory with a lot of bourbons, but whoa, yeah, that right. taste is—it's beautiful. It really is. Damn. So they're aging. I wonder what size barrels they're aging in. But it's, all right. So what does we're not have this weird? It does not taste overly young. It doesn't taste overly green. Right. It does taste vibrant and bright and sparkly. Mm -hmm. But then behind it are these sort of chocolate-covered coffee bean kind of action going on. Yep. Might there's that corn dust and slight vanilla, and then there's a weird bit of mint note in there. Ironclad. Damn, fellas. That's a good bourbon. Wow, I really like that. Wow. So this is right on the James River. How hard is this to get, by the way? Um, I don't know. I saw it in our area, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything. By the way, George Saris. George Theris, you did us a solid. You brought us this one. George Theris, you magnificent! Master. 
So, uh, I've seen it. Yeah. Yeah. But I can't remember where I saw it. There was a bar that had it locally even, I think. Maybe not. So for me, this isn't... Uh, this isn't like a unicorn weird bourbon that you would try and never expect it to be bourbon. This has a lot of the classic elements that you have with bourbons, but they're just really, really well executed. I it's get, a very balanced whiskey. It's super balanced, but it's balancing complexity. It's balancing a lot of notes. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, if you're looking for something with a lot of nuance, a lot of room to explore, this has it, but if you don't want, if you're also looking for something that's just not going to be weird, because sometimes you go exploring something that's just weird and different and funky. This is like absolutely a bourbon. And it has a lot of yeah, those but, very classic notes, but then it has a lot of other stuff no, that This is it, way off of profile for like Kentucky bourbon. Yeah, it's still totally different. It has a lot of other notes that still fit bourbon, right? In addition to the classic notes, but it, it's not stereotypical notes. Uh, specifically, I'm getting that that walnut and the mustiness we often get, but it's a balanced mustiness. And there's sort of a waxy note. Okay, so a little bit of water tamps down the mustiness and the spices and the taste yeah. and brings out all the uh, vanilla and like the yellow cake birthday cake. Yeah, a little bit of the lemon. No, not lemon. Not yellow cake? The yellow cake with vanilla frosting yellow cake. Like just standard cake batter yellow cake. Because I was going back to this on the nose, and I was getting a little bit of uh, like a, almost a lemon zest, a citrus on the back end of the nose there. But... Yeah, I'm not finding that. Yeah, taste it for a while and then go back for the nose, and it's on the, no the finish of the nose. No, what's weird is... This, I, this is freaking me out. It's, it's very complex. Mm -hmm. uh, what keeps happening to me is, my first nose, everything's bright. But then as I sit there for a second... It's like behind all of that shine yeah. is are these really dark notes. Yeah, yeah. And but they but they're it's like I keep trying to get to them to figure out what they are, and I just can't quite reach them. This is I'm getting uh, the sweetness. I'm gonna put a pin in it as a caramelized sugar, and that vanilla from the creme brulee is mixed in there a little bit, but it's more so that caramelized sugar top. So. Back in uh, early high school, I did a book report mm -hmm. on the early years of ironclad warships. Yeah. Do you know about this at all? Do you know what ironside ships are? Yeah, it's from like the Civil War. Yeah, so that's about when they started to really come into dominance. I tell you. So this. you have the you have the the uh, industrialization of America starts resulting in the ability to create metals that can be fitted to ships without sinking them from sheer weight, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so you get metallurgy becomes a whole, reaches a whole new level. And um, they start, so this is the era of the ships, the navies, they were, you know, the armadas and things yeah. from, for about 200 years. And then all of a sudden they start wrapping these ships in metal and all those cannonballs and things, they just ping, <laughs> ping, all the red hot shot yeah. that they used to shoot into. Because actually what most people didn't realize is around this time you also had exploding shells. Mm -hmm. That was the origins of cannon poof, exploding shells. And I was like, yeah, the exploding shells are going to do a lot more damage. Right. Turns out, no, actually, not really. They do. Right. They cause an explosion. They rip boards apart and things like that. Right. But what caused way more damage is red hot metal shot. Hmm. Because it would pierce the boat yeah. and then set things on fire, like the ammunition piles and the gunpowder barrels. So I guess the exploding stuff, if you were hit the top of the deck, all of the walking meat piles would get tore up a bit. Yeah. But if you're trying to just take down the ship and it's take like, down the whole lot. You're just splintering things, right? It's a bigger target. But you get red hot shot in through there, yeah. and it hits the gunpowder cask. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. Right? So it actually was way more damaging. Then they get these metal ships, and then you have the Civil War, the beginnings of battles between metal ships. Right. Where they're like ramming each other, right. trying to knock holes in each other while simultaneously shooting each other, things that are bouncing off the metal. Mm -hmm. But from that day on, wooden ships, they were fucked. Mm. That was the end of the magical Pirates of the Caribbean romantic idea of wooden ships with sails sure. and things like that. It's like, no, that, that's it. You, you show up with 15 wooden ships trying to take out an Ironside boat, Ironside's just going to work them all, <laughs> right? You should put some iron on this. 
So uh, they, uh, n that's where they get the name of their distillery. Because it, it says... By the way, this is the King's family. Stephen King, Owen King, and Kara King. Mighty ships inspired our name. That's why we're sticking to our guns. We make authentic bourbon. It's like a pun. It's like a dad joke. That's it. Nothing else. It's our ironclad rule. Ah, two dad jokes. <laughs> it's my people. I forgive you for making such a nice bourbon. So they operate inside of a warehouse that has been there since 1913. Because you made such a nice bourbon. 1913, okay. So if I add a little bit of water, you know what I got? That green note we don't like. Yeah, it brought it back out. It brought the green note out. Yeah. So without water, definitely, is the way to go. Yeah, they at 90, it's right where it needs to be. Man, I can't get that. I love, I love you guys. There's no questions. There's this really great... You know, supportive comments. Mm. Here, I think I've had one. Although I enjoy Rick's month, I have to say that if you have to explain it, did it really work? Something tells me that the next story arc will be Daniel that needs to be overthrown. Also, Rex, how did you not complete the dry week? Another great question. <laughs> so what happened was, and so that's what I've been saying right. this whole time. Exactly. And no one's listening. Yeah, you, you were right. You were right. <laughs> Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. You steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink, may you drink with us. <laughs> hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw on a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.